Hello there. Well, this is a special day for new directives and new information. Now, you probably don't know this, uh, there's a sort of a technical place above me, a kind of like a lab, if you like, where I've been meeting for the last seven months with speech therapists, psychologists and gynecologists, brain surgeons and truckers, fishermen and a farmer with a wooden leg. All of them professionals in their field. And of course, they're all men, real men. And we have analysed hours upon hours upon hours of Femon speaking, either to each other or to a man. And the consensus is that it's either gibberish or misinformation. So this strongly backs up the normal way of thinking, and that is don't listen to what a Femon says, just look at what she does. For instance, she will say she hates your friend, and she doesn't want him coming round to see you anymore. And then you will find out later she has slept with him. You see, complete misinformation. But if man's nothing else, he's polite. So when a femon is speaking, just smile and nod your head, but don't listen to anything she says. Because hardly any of it makes any sense, at least on this planet. Femons do seem very good at taking in information and spurting it out exactly as it received it, almost in a robotic fashion. But we found that they hardly ever analysed the information and made it their own, and individual thinking was very rare. This information has come at a cost. One of our people upstairs is under sedation at the moment, and it doesn't look too good for the outcome. Mind you, he's listened to far more Femon speaking than any one of us. If you have to converse with a Femon, just use casual things like, you know, how's the weather, or the weather is nice today. And something like, you know, that's a lovely dress you're wearing. But anything much deeper than that, and you could be in a world of hurt. Just from my own personal experience, I listened to over an hour and a half of a femon continuously talking. Apart from the fact of me going dizzy quite a few times, I have no idea what the hell she was talking about at the end of it. Now, one of the scientists that we're working with has come up with a hypothesis. Try that when you've had a couple of Budweiser's. They think for the reason for the gobbledygook speech is that their brain is naturally connected to the cortex. He believes their brain is actually floating around in their head, and only occasionally it gets connected to the cortex. I mean, it's just a theory, but it could be true, and it certainly would make a lot of sense. This is good information, because this information you will not receive in any medical books. We are pioneers in this field, and I always believe real information is where you find it. What you people do with this information is entirely up to you. And as for me, it makes sense until I find another hypothesis. Good day, sirs.